Hi all, Michael Teal with Presentation Plus Ups. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate why and how adopting a broadcast mentality can radically elevate your Zoom and Teams meeting production value and make you look good in the process. For serious, I've been using this technique for multi-million dollar corporate presentations around the globe, and I've yet to meet an audience member who isn't blown away, or more importantly, highly engaged. I'm going to go into crazy detail in this one, so stick around to the end to discover my super secret method to broadcast in HD on Zoom, Teams, WebEx, you name it. Let's plus it up, shall we? Here's the issue. The production bar on an out-of-the-box Zoom or Teams meeting is set pretty low. Sure, you can show your camera and you can show screen share, but anything beyond that, like playing music, videos, or flowing seamlessly between several screens in a way that engages your audience, well, it just ain't happening. If you're looking to make a big impact in your next presentation, here's my recommendation. Adopt a broadcast mindset and some affordable broadcasting tools for your next Zoom or Teams meeting. Let me show you some inspiration with a quick demo of this approach right from my very own one-man band virtual studio. Okay, it's demo time, so let's do a little show and share. So first of all, think of a live sporting event or a live newscast. There's hosts and there's graphics, right? There's multiple camera cuts. There's pre-taped video packages. They just mix it up. At this point, this is the standard we're accustomed to in popular culture. And over the past year and a half, the idea of engineering a home office virtual studio that can bring a significant degree of this magic into a business-related Zoom or Teams presentation has been my own personal holy grail. As I've scoured the internet learning from live streamers and gamers, I've searched for inspiration to come up with a business-focused broadcast solution tailored for the Zoom or Teams environment. Unfortunately, there's just not a lot out there beyond your basic, here's how to stick a book under your laptop, or here's how a ring light works. That is, until today. Here's my home office business-focused virtual broadcast setup. I call it Four Screens and the Truth. Hey everyone, we are here in my home office right now. As you can see, I've got a couple of different cameras going. Camera one, camera two. We got just two right now. We could set up a lot of different ones, but what we wanna do is just introduce you to this concept, let you know that you can do this. Now I will say you need at least three screens. I love four screens for the flexibility it gives me. But the fact is, if you have three screens, you can achieve everything that I'm demonstrating for you here. So let's take a look at screen number one. So let me put up a graphic for you. So screen number one is right over here. This is my Zoom and OBS screen, or if you're using Teams or WebEx, I'm just saying Zoom as a generic, like in the days when we used to say Xerox, okay? So this is that screen. I'm gonna bring this up for you live here. Hello everyone, how's it going? I've got this set up. So in my left screen, this is my control panel where I mix everything, all right? So I am literally mixing all kinds of different scenes, videos, music, multiple cameras, picture in picture, this kind of stuff where we've got picture in picture going on. I'm doing all that in OBS. So let's break this back down here. So on the OBS screen, if I move back to it, you have a lot of things. You have the ability to create scenes. So a scene could be as simple as just a camera only, or a scene could be much more complex like this countdown demo that you're seeing right now on screen. So in this case, I brought a lot of different videos in from YouTube. I set up a pre-event uh, pre element. I'm gonna set up a little countdown timer right now. I'll start it for you. And you can see there's lots of cool stuff going on on this screen. So we've got some abilities to do some very powerful things with OBS to create that broadcast ability. You need to have a screen 
to put that on. So I will use my left screen. I, I don't know why, but I choose that one. So on this screen, you can see I've got all my different pre-built scenes and it will depend on the presentation that I'm doing. I'll set up different scenes and in each scene, you can set up different compositions. So look at this scene alone and you're gonna notice I've got my own video screen on it. I have, and I'm highlighting this in the picture in picture, I have a display capture, which is the fancy name for saying I want to capture that left screen. I've got a logo. Now, if I hit a button, I can switch that to a different scene. In this case, I've increased the size of my webcam. I've shrunk the size of my display capture, which is my middle screen. This is the power station of all of it. Now, I want you to notice that I also will put Zoom or Teams or anything like that right here, okay? So the thing is, the first powerful thing about OBS and using it for this broadcast concept is that you can pipe everything we're doing to Zoom or Teams right through what is called a virtual camera. So take a look here. And matter of fact, I'll just go ahead and make this big for you. I'm gonna go over here to my camera. I'm gonna look at the options and the option I have selected is OBS virtual camera, all right? Now pay attention to that because I'm going to hit a button in OBS called Stop Virtual Camera. And in this case, you're going to see a really weird, looks like some sort of Batman symbol, like an evil criminal symbol right here or a ninja star or something like that. But this is the icon for OBS. And that lets you know that if you do not have your virtual camera started like I do now, you will not be able to pipe everything through that. So that alone is very powerful in terms of your ability to just bring a camera with some improved elements into your Zoom environment. That gives you a lot of broadcast ability. Like I have right here, uh, a lower third graphic come up when your face is on camera. That's a nice win. You can use OBS just as a virtual camera and bringing that in. We're gonna show you why that's not the best tactic if you're doing a Zoom and Teams presentation and you want that HD look, you want that 1080p or at minimum a 720p look. That's the standard that we're looking for when we look at a television. It's either 720p, that's 720 pixels tall, or 1080p. Okay, so let's back this up. This was screen one, this is my mothership, this is the crazy detail, all right? I'm gonna bring us up to my second screen. And this is over here. This is where I put anything that would be traditionally screen shared. So obviously that could be presentations, so slide decks here. And I talked about in the previous video, and if you wanna look up for the link above, you'll see it, that you could use something like Internet Clicker and let individuals all over the world control your local PowerPoint deck while you're doing all this OBS stuff over here. It's super powerful and I love it. So the idea is I put anything that we're going to present over on this screen. So that would be slides, if you have a web browser, if you're using live polling, anything like that, stick it on this screen and you'll be able to bring that up and often you can bring it up if you're playing a video or something like that over in OBS as I was doing. So let's just kick up a little video again. This is a pre-session countdown timer and uh, I'll just bring myself back on screen. Hello everyone, how you doing? So this is the idea. If you can, this is a much more complex video. This is one where I've got four or five videos on an asynchronous loop. But if you just said, I need to show an opening video, I want it to feel buttery smooth, any of these could be the representative of an opening video. Okay, so you can see we got things going on here. You've seen screen two. Let's talk about how I mix all that audio together. And that will be a screen three over here. So screen three is my audio mixer. I've set up a scene for that. So let's bring it up. Here's my third screen. Let me just kick back over here so that you know, this is my third screen, all right? The things I use, and these are my secrets, and believe me, I have had dreams, stress dreams. I've looked at videos in French, had them transcribed to figure out everything <laughs> that you're looking at right now. But what I've come to the realization is, what we wanna do is adopt more of a, what I call the Death Star laser concept. What I have going 
is the ability to take multiple sources of audio and port it like the Death Star right into your Zoom or Teams microphone. Now the benefit is you no longer need to uh, hit that little share audio button when you screen share, it just happens. So for example, you're gonna notice I have my microphone, which we can see right here. I've got a little microphone down here, okay? So we have the ability to port a microphone into our Zoomer Teams mix. I have iTunes, so I can go ahead and bring up some iTunes for you. Let me just, I think we've got a little music going. Nice. Hearing a little bit of tunes there, cool, cool. All right, so we can bring that in. Now we can also have other things. So for example, OBS, I'm bringing OBS into the mix. And then over here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send information to Zoom and I'm gonna loop it back from Zoom in here. So there is a 15 minute video all set up on audio mixing, but the bottom line is you want an audio mixer to virtually mix all of your different sources so you can do things like this. Thank you, thank you. Right on the press of a button. So audio mixing, that is an essential piece of this broadcast concept. Now I'm gonna bring up another thing for you. So let me just kick back over here. You've seen screen one, screen two, screen three. One of my hidden features and one of my favorites is this thing called the Elgato Stream Deck, okay? So this Elgato Stream Deck, and it looks like I have it set up right here. I'll go to camera one. Boop. The Elgato Stream Deck, gives you, there we go, the ability to program in all kinds of different default functionalities. And this is so important because this allows you to focus most of your attention on the camera. This is essentially for about $160 a producer here in your one man band home office. If you've stuck with me this long, you'll know we can't use just the virtual camera in Zoom or Teams because it's not good enough. It doesn't give you that high res. So if you're showing presentations, like what I'm gonna do right here, if you're showing a PowerPoint deck or if you're bringing it up full, it's gonna look really, really blurry in Zoom or Teams if you just pipe it through that little virtual camera webcam. But here is my solution. And this is why I have four screens and why I call it four screens and the truth. So my top screen that you see up here, and by the way, I don't wanna to get too biblical here, uh, but I call this my sacrificial lamb. <laughs> if you were at a Marriott courtyard and you were doing a presentation, you'd pull down a screen, maybe back in the old days, now you'd have a nice monitor there. But all we're going to do is project the OBS output, what we call the program, onto that screen and then screen share that screen in Zoom or Teams. So let's take a look at this. I'm gonna go back to my left picture in picture and show you how this works. What I'm going to do, and usually I'll do this before people even show up. I will just already start the screen share so they think that's my television tube, that's my broadcast, okay. So watch very carefully. This is the David Copperfield stuff. I am going to go down to screen share. I'm going to look for my screen, which has my composition. Now, ironically, it's currently called screen four. So I'm going to click that one. Now in Zoom, I'm going to slightly tailor or taper down the the resolution to maximize the frame rate. That's the smoothness. So to do that, I will hit optimize video clip, but I will turn off share sound, okay? So follow me there. That's going to, when I show you that I'm sharing this screen, and right now I am sharing that screen. So for effect for you, just so that you can see, I'm gonna go back to my face cam. This is, this is my Zoom feed right now, watch. Okay, I'm gonna, I probably can't do it. I can do a little bit of it for you but I am showing you right now that I am porting my face cam into Zoom and let's look at the high res quality of that. So let's go back 
And let's take a look at Zoom in terms of the overall quality of it. We're gonna take a look at those video stats. Let's bring them on up. Video settings, and this is something I've gotten used to doing if I'm doing a Zoom or Teams, is just getting a feel of what's happening. So I peek underneath the hood, I go to statistics, and I'm going to go to screen sharing, and you're gonna see I am screen sharing my OBS output at 1280 by 720. That's high def, folks, all right? You can see 30 frames per second. That's buttery smooth, okay? We're not getting any of that old 1950s Charlie Chaplin burp, 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 stuff. This is buttery smooth. Now, if I turned off optimize for video, I would kick it all the way up to 1080p, but I've found in Zoom, and specific to Zoom, is that the frames per second start to get a little angry. So sometimes it'll dip down to 15, per, 15 frames per second. That's the old thing. If you've ever seen uh, folks throwing baseballs back in the day where they're throwing a baseball and it looks like they go like this, and then they talk to somebody like this, that's 15 frames per second. You're not getting the smoothness that you're seeing right now, okay? So the idea is we want to optimize for video, turn off sound, if you have all the cool stuff that I showed you on screen three over here. So if you have all this stuff on screen three, you don't need to optimize. Now, if you're baby stepping, what I would recommend is start out, start out by sharing for sound and just working your way into it, but you can't get all this cool stuff. All the nice sound effects, unless you're piping it right through that voice meter system that I showed you earlier. But you can see there's so much power of being able to port anything you want into your OBS program because instead of you being a tiny little thumbnail in your screen share, you take up the entire screen. You are a rock star. You are a dynamic presence. You're mixing up the content. You've got all kinds of ability to do different things with this four screen layout. I know that was a lot. Hopefully you enjoyed it. This was the science of how things happen in terms of the art of how to construct your various picture in pictures or how to mix your audio or even how to make your PowerPoint slides look kick ass when you are presenting. This is the kind of stuff I'm gonna be talking about throughout presentation plus ups here. So. I'd love to do this nonstop. I can't, I have a day job. I need to honor my employer. I'm a creative director. But if this is the kind of stuff you like, please spread the word. I'd love it if you'd subscribe, if you'd hit the like button, if you'd click the notifications button, all that kind of good stuff. But please spread the word. I'm dedicated to helping you improve your virtual presence from a business perspective. And thanks for sticking around so much. In the meantime, make it a great day.